Hello there, everybody. I'm Mr. Game Pod. Welcome back to Let's Play Kirby 64. This time, we're going to be finishing up Neo Star. Now, as you can see, I've come into this level with a totally different ability than I had last time. This is Ice Spark, considered one of the best abilities in the game. At least, you know, by some people. I'm not that big a fan of it, but we need an Ice ability, any Ice ability in this level, and I figured I'd show it off. This is the Refrigerator ability. And it's unique because you throw out food. The food can attack people, but it can also heal you. With this, you basically have as much health as you could ever possibly want. Like, honestly, there's... That's, uh, that's the big thing. In fact, it's such a popular ability that people have made a speedrunning mode for it, where they get the fridge ability as early as possible, and then just use it throughout the entire game and try to go through the levels as fast as they can. But hey, we're in a cave again. Surprise, surprise, Neostar, it's got a, got a lot of caves. In a game that already has quite a few caves, this is the cave world. <laughs> but uh, more seriously, it's, uh, it's a lava cave. So I guess that's a little bit different than what we've seen previously. Oh my goodness. That is just ridiculous right there. Yeah, the fridge is definitely not the most powerful ability. It's certainly a support ability more than anything else. It's hard to aim. It's hard to hit things with. Oh. But the fact that you can just keep healing yourself, and the fact that it is a projectile at least, certainly makes it, uh, you know, a very viable ability in that regard. Yeah, there we go. Got a mid-air hit with that. As long as you don't actually lose the ability, nothing should happen to you. Ah, his projectile's gotten the way. Of my projectile, there we go. And yeah, I'm pretty sure that uh, as long as the food is out, it still acts as a hitbox. Oh yeah, Deity has a section in this level, this is pretty cool. So, uh, hey yeah, it's the second section where we get to ride DDD. And uh, this time, we actually get to see one of his other abilities. He can charge up his hammer by spinning it. And in the first section, this was useless. But here in this section, these pillars normally take two hits to break. But a single charged up attack can easily, you know, break them apart in one hit. And it doesn't take very long to charge up either. And considering that these pillars stun you for whenever you hit them, it's, uh, it's not a bad idea to uh, charge up your hammer first. Although with this guy, you know, he's kind of in the way. He's gonna try to blow fire on you, so... Might be best to try to hit him the first time. There we go. Hidden crystal shard right there. It's not that hidden. You could already see that you could break that pillar, so why not break it, right? Ah. Some of these jumps are a little bit awkward. But there we go. DD section down. And we continue. And we still need to keep our ice ability. In fact, uh, speaking of our ice ability, let's let's heal ourselves a little bit, since that's something we can do. Oh yeah, the fridge can't actually break apart the uh, the blocks, so you'll need to do that with your slide or something. Not that big a deal. I love the way the lava looks in this level. How like some of it is bulging out of the ground there. That's pretty great. Oh. Yeah, I guess that guy's not gonna get hit. Oh well. I'll live, but he won't. Actually, he will, because I'm not going to kill him. Oh, I tried to turn around. That's okay, though. We can just heal ourselves. Seriously, though, Ice Spark is kind of an easy mode in the game. It's not necessarily easy to kill things with, but you're not gonna die. <laughs> you're not dying anytime soon if you're using this power. Plus, this level already tosses out a decent amount of food for you. Though, as one might expect, the lava level is one of the more deadly levels in the game. But yeah, that's something that I haven't mentioned yet, is it? You can jump underneath enemies and hit them from below to, like, stun them. I think if you do this enough times, it will eventually defeat them, but it's not exactly the most effective way of dealing with things. Oh yeah, this looks pretty cool. Got these little lava geysers coming out of the wall here. 
they're not too dangerous. Just minor hindrances, if anything. Let's just float over this guy. There we go. Threaded that needle. Mm, nope, that's not gonna... Oh, wait, it is. Yay, it hit the guy. And here we go. Here's this thing. Oh, no. Oh, no, it can't... Ice Spark is one of the ice abilities that can't actually break this thing. You need an ice ability for it, so I guess I'll just come back here later with some other ice ability. Okay. I guess we haven't shown off very many ice abilities, so... It's not like it's a big loss that I got to show this one off or anything. Alright, well, let's just keep moving then. We have a keep moving section with the big lava wall behind us. It's actually kind of a bad idea to be using our uh, ice uh, spark ability right now since uh, it requires us to stop. And stopping right now is not advised. Yeah, as a whole, the rest of this level is going to be a big keep moving section. It's pretty dangerous. You know, big wall of love behind you. It's, uh, it's bad news. That said, the platforming challenges that they're presenting you with here aren't too difficult, especially if you remember that you can fly. I know that's something that made it a little bit difficult uh, in my first time playing this, is the fact that Kirby had limited flight made me behave as though Kirby had no flight at all. Which isn't true. He can still fly in this game. He's perfectly capable of such things. So don't be afraid to use that ability to your advantage. Also, there's a, uh, there's a crystal shard over here. Oh, okay. Normally you can climb through platforms to defeat enemies above them, but uh, not that platform, apparently. That's a little bit odd. Oh. There we go. Yeah, like that. That happened right there. In this section, you don't actually need an ability that attacks upward. Just need to be careful with uh, breaking things above your head. And there we go. We are out of there. Ah, not quite far enough. Well, I'll be back with some other ice ability to deal with that. All right, and we're back. And this time we have the stone ice ability. And uh, yep, there we go, it can break it. Yeah, the stone ice ability is a curling ability. It turns you into a curling stone, and it allows you to move actually pretty fast whenever you start off, although you do eventually start slowing down. And as you can see, uh, you ice over enemies whenever you run past them. And the little ice flakes that come off of you from behind, they uh, they can also do damage. It's uh, originally whenever I uh, looked up a guide to figure out that particular crystal shard, it told me that you had to use that particular ability to, to get it. Though that's not the case. I have gotten that. I have broken that thing with other abilities before. Yes, that uh, that particular crystal shard is definitely one of the more obscure ones in the game, considering that uh, it's not a blue thing. There's really nothing to indicate that you need the ice ability in particular to break that. So, with all that said, I'm going to leave now. So, it's time for us to take on the boss of Neo Star. This is Magman, and I've got a new ability to fight him with. This is Spark Cutter, and it's one of the most aesthetically pleasing abilities in the game, because Kirby gets a lightsaber. Not much is cooler than that. It's not actually the most effective ability in the game. It really just uh, surrounds a short area around you, but it gets the distance to uh, defeat Magman's little parts here, his little magma tentacles. There we go. Oh. And I found a lava. But of course, now Magman is done being in the background. He's going into the foreground for some direct combat. But can living lava defeat a Jedi Master? Or perhaps Kirby's actually a Sith Lord. Notable about Magman is that his face is his vulnerable area. Trying to hit his body won't do anything. And he has a couple different moves. He can create earthquakes, he can breathe lava, he can turn into a pool of lava and move across the ground. And that, that's it, really. 
Magman isn't too difficult, especially if you have a projectile attack. That makes him even easier. Yeah, things are becoming unsettling, as, you know, volcanoes are erupting. It would appear that the age of the dinosaurs is coming to an end, and we're coming to an end with it. But we have another planet to explore, so we move on. The next world, World 5, is Shiver Star. And if we might look at this planet for a little bit, it's, uh... Its landmasses might look a little bit familiar. We'll probably talk about this more later. Let's move on to the level itself. Hi. So yeah, this is an ice world. It's, uh, you know, the first level is icy, exactly what you would expect. Although, uh, the combining of mechanics and thematics is definitely going to be something that we see a lot in this world. If anything, we see it more in this world than in any other in the game. It's the most intense one. And uh, as a result, it is a favorite of many. Neostar is kind of what I would consider a low point for the game, but Shiver Star is one of the high points. And right off the bat, we pretty much just have a bunch of enemy-based challenges, really. Lots of enemies that give you ice, some, other, some enemies that give you other abilities, and our lightsaber is just absolutely plowing through everything. It is beautiful. You know, everything, uh, this is a bit of a breather after the likes of Neo Star's Volcano stage, I'd say. After all, that was probably one of the toughest stages so far. But here we just have a happy little ice world. It's so nice and fun. There's definitely going to be a winter thematic throughout this world. And uh, as a whole, it's just really happy looking. I like it a lot. Yeah, as one might expect out of a snowy tundra, there isn't a whole lot going on here. Oh, but here we have Waddle D. Yep, we get to go on a little uh, sled ride. Or is this a sled, or is it more of a toboggan? This, ju this just makes me think of uh, that one sport that uh, appears in the Olympics, where it's like people slide down uh, super fast, and there's like four people within the same device. What if Kirby did that? <laughs> I don't know how, how good he'd be at it, considering he's so light. Also, uh, yeah, there's a crystal shard there. Overall, this first level is actually really easy. Like, the, the crystal shards are super out in the open, and it's just, it's a very relaxing level. It's mostly enemy-based challenges. Oh yeah, I guess there is this thing up here. I think we actually need a fire ability to break that down, so... Yeah, just as I was talking about how easy the, uh, the crystal shards are to collect in this level, we have one that I can't actually do right now. We'll have to come back here later with some fire ability of some sort. Shouldn't be too difficult, though. Yeah, uh, and now here we have an icy lake. You know what? Uh, let's actually grab the ice ability here. Aw, oh, yeah. Creating this giant shield of cold air around us to block any incoming damagers. You can go underneath the ice water, and it's actually what we need to do right here. Careful, since there's a Gordo right underneath the water. Oh boy. Kirby's ice ability is actually pretty effective underwater. It still has the same range as always, although stopping it does take a while. Kirby has to face forward again for that to happen. Yeah, there was, uh, there's the last Crystal Shard of the level. So now we'll just have to come back here with some sort of fire ability. And given the fact that double fire is the most efficient movement method in the game, well, that's, that's probably what I'm going to use to get there. And it'll be pretty easy. Seeing Chili just reminds me of one episode of the anime where it appeared, and it was really sad. <laughs> Chili ended up being one of the few monsters in the series that Kirby actually befriended, and 
you know, considering that Dreamland in that uh, series is a tropical climate, whenever the various, uh, whenever the happenstance of a cold front disappeared, Chili would die. Of course, we didn't actually see Chili die. They sent him off into the ocean to hopefully find, like, the North Pole or something, where Chili could survive in his snowman state forever. But Kirby would never get to see him again. It is kind of odd. There were quite a few different monsters that Kirby befriended over the course of the series. And while Chili had a perfectly viable explanation for never appear appearing again, and another one was even sadder for why it disappeared, one of the uh, monsters that Kirby actually befriended was Galbo. And it had no reason for disappearing after its introductory episode. It just never showed up again for some reason. I don't know why. Anyway, that's that level. Oh man, the car is right next to us again. Let's see if I can make this happen this time. There we go, that's it. All right, so let's go grab that crystal shard and I'll probably call it an episode after that. And we're back. So with the double fire ability, we're gonna be able to break that thing up there. Also, I guess, uh, oh, we need to be careful about this though, because we don't want to, oh my gosh. There we go. Yeah, we don't want our fire ability suddenly launching us outside of the room. That would be bad. So let's try to just, uh... Yeah, there we go. That works. Although it is kind of awkward. Oh, gee whiz. Oh, no! Jeez, these, these ice birds are more dangerous than the actual mini-boss. Jeez! No, 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 Oh my gosh. All right, we're back yet again, this time with a completely different ability. That should hopefully be able to take this guy out like really easily. Yeah, there we go. Now I just have to uh, be able to hit that thing up there with this. And there we go, that's it. Yeah, I uh, considered using an ability, an ability that we had never seen before, but we've seen every other fire ability except for one, and I'm gonna have to use that one later anyway. So, fire sword it was. Anyway, with that said, that's the end of this episode. I'm Mr. Game Pie, and uh, if you've enjoyed this episode, then uh, consider looking at my social media accounts and maybe even supporting me on Patreon so I can cre keep creating more episodes like these. Until then, see you next time.